today is about you guys and what you're going to get from this session and what I'm going to get from the session. Danny, can I have your phone please? I'm just turning it off. Oh really? Oh, Are you sure? Well. Thank you. I'm brutal when it comes to phone. I know I've just met you, but because I know all your names, I'm now on a personal level. I do apologise. Okay. Jordan, are you happy? Yeah. Okay. Fern, Emily, Nick, Jordan, Cherie, Alicia, Alicia, Amy, Mr. Ibrahim, Mr. Beeston, Mr. Brooke, Moby, Nicola, Merjahi. Is that correct pronunciation? James, Molly, and Billy, and Joe. Okay. My name is Barber B. I'm a master barber of 25 years of industry experience. I am also an educator. I run a barber shop for Unisex Salon in Leeds. I've run that for the last 15 years. I also run my own barbering academy of which I've been running for also 15 years. I have at the academy I have BTCT approved just like the college. We deliver the same qualifications just like this college. I'm a standalone academy. I specialise in private learners so all my learners that come to me pay for their courses out of their own pockets. So I always know that they're going to get the most out of what I'm delivering, okay? Luckily for you, today is an enterprise day, so I've been invited very kindly by Kirklees College through my connections at Dennis Williams to do an enterprise day. I'm currently going to, I'm trying to set up a tour around the north of the country, delivering to learners and educators and telling them about all the, all the things that possible in the barbering stroke hairdressing industry. Habia is the body, the government body that develops and makes courses, which we call the standard. VTCT is an awarding body, City and Guilds is an awarding body. These two awarding bodies both get their information from Habia. Okay? So Habia write the standards and then awarding bodies buy the standards from Habia and then deliver courses. The colleges then buy the information from the various awarding bodies to deliver the education to you guys. They use guys like us, tutors, to deliver the standards to you to give you an understanding. Okay? Vocational training is probably as important or if not more important than university training. Okay? It's the same thing. Some people think going to university is the be all and end all of everything, but without the service industry and our industries, we wouldn't, they wouldn't be where they are and we wouldn't be where we are. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting a little bit hoarse. My point being is that outside of your chair and working in a salon and working mobile as hairdressers and barbers, there are other places in the industry where you could develop your skills if you choose, choose to do so and get into the industry from a different angle, okay? Don't think it's all about cutting hair. Cutting hair in the salons is the front line of the industry. That's where we all start, okay? <coughs> Fern, Emily, Jordan, Nick, Danny, Jordan, Cherie, Alicia, Alicia, Amy, Mr. Ibrahim, Beeston, Mr. Brooke, Mr. Moby, Nicola, Majahid, Billy, uh, sorry, Billy, James, and Molly, who talks quiet. I've been in this room exactly 10 minutes and I know everybody's name, okay? Very important to connect and directly speak to people on a very personal level all the time. The amount of clients that will pass through your chair, the first thing you should know is their name. It's important, it's a very endearing thing to do because when your clients come back as they walk through the door, you will greet them by their name. If you've forgotten their name, ask them their name. If you've asked them their name more than once, use a method, what I call, um, kind of an indirect ask of the name, which could be, how do you spell this? Or how do you spell your name? You can, there's things you can do, are you in the book? Who did you book it in with? Appointments are very important. 
I'm going to do a couple of demos today. While I'm doing the demonstrations, I'm going to talk. But what I want to do first of all, I want this needs to be an interactive session that you're just going to get bored. You're just going to have a study of talking. I've done quite a lot already, so I would like your input while I'm working. If there's anything that you need to know, if there's any questions you want to ask about any of the work on here, I'm happy to kind of fill you in. So work experience is probably the one of the most important things that you could achieve in the industry, especially if you're not working in the industry all the time. Who usually cuts your hair, Jordan, in here? No one cuts it in here. Why? Because I go to my barber. Goes to his barber, everybody's got their barber. Why do you go to your barber? It's just been my barber from first cut, so just loyal. This is all information. He's giving you information. What I'm doing here is a consultation. He's <laughs> led me on to a very important subject which is punctuality. You cannot be late coming to work or going to work for your clients. You cannot be late coming to college. The education part of this is the most important thing in the industry because we run on an appointment system. And let me tell you, my appointments are always on time and I'm always late. Not because I'm late for work, but because I'm so busy, my appointments occasionally run late. But Punctuality is one of the most important things that's going to make you a gentleman or a lady. Okay, it's so important. What we do in this country is we take for granted the education that we're given to us that is free and just don't appreciate it enough, I think. The guys that pay me to come for my learning are never late because they're paying their hard earned cash the same way that you pay for your haircut. They pay cash and they're never late. So it's important. You've got a good phone, haven't you? A good phone, yeah. Yeah, make sure they don't be late. Barbering and hairdressing is a team effort. As much as it's an individual sport, you're all individuals while you're doing one-on-one -on -one clients, but while you're in this learning environment in here, you are all here to learn from one another. I've already learned that this gentleman's a wizard and a razor. I already knew that from, he said to me it was from Pedestal. I already know that. Asian barbers again, very, I've got a great ability with razor blades. A lot of Asian barbers are wizards with razor blades. I have a young man in my shop whose dad is a barber. He has a, he's been barbering for 30 years and his dad has sent his son to me. And I went to visit his dad in his shop and I was amazed by the skills that his dad had with his razor and shaved five minutes flat. Okay, so it's important that you hear as a team, okay, so you need to kind of get a grip, put your second alarm on and stop being late. Please, for me. This is your session. You guys have got to take from this session as much information as possible. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut and talk, okay? I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. I chose Afro hair today because Afro hair is famously one of the most difficult types of hair texture to cut, and blend and fade and to get right, and get correct and skin types and, and understand some of that. Okay, you, you usually have a skin fit. <coughs> so you had your hair cut about a week ago. Yeah. Okay. Have you just recently started growing this out? Yeah. Okay. And I know this because where his fade is, it's got about a week's growth on it. He's got his crown is up here somewhere, okay? I personally, with this now, because he's, I've only done a mini consultation, I'm gonna drop his fade slightly because he's planning on growing his hair out. Are you gonna twist it? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know, you're gonna plait it? I'm just thinking about it, yeah. Okay, rolls from front to back. Okay, rolls from front to back. Okay, rolls over here. So again, I'm doing the consultation and I'm working back so this information that he's giving me here is going to tell me how I'm going to cut his hair. Okay, hygiene, barber size. This is hospital standard disinfectant for your tools, for your combs. These should be done each time you come in the salon every two or three days at least. The barber side jar should be, I like to have these on shore, so it shouldn't be in the back where most people have them in the corner of the back wash. <coughs> and hidden away because you need to you need to advertise the fact that you're looking after business and hygiene is very important 
okay, my most important, who knows what this is? Not you, Joe. Mr. <laughs> Ibrahim. Okay, Clipperside is made by the same company, Barbicide for your clippers, okay? <laughs> very, very important. It stops cross contamination, cross infection, sterilizes your tools. You can use it every time you use your clippers. If you remember, the clipper and the blade is making direct contact with the skin on everybody, okay? So it's so important that you use your clipper side on all of your clippers. It's cool to be clean is one of my mottos, okay? You wouldn't go to the doctors and expect them to perform any form of treatment if they're going to do an examination, give you an injection or anything without them hand sanitizing or putting on gloves. So, hand sanitizer, I have these all over my shop. Like if you're walking the door with one, most of the barbers have got one next to their sections. Razor blades, lots of them. Okay, how many times do you use a blade? Yeah. Anybody else shave? Do we have anybody else who's using razors at the moment? Who's a level two barber in here? Health and safety, so important <coughs> in the salon, okay? I'm trying to touch on everything that you're gonna learn about on the course. This is the first thing, okay? Barber site, there's, if you go onto the barber site website, there's a, a, a test that you can do. Please fill out the test and you'll get a certificate from barber site. Okay, to say that you've passed their hygiene, so there's a little questions and answers, plus you can leave information and then you can buy products, okay? Club and Pinot, it's French, okay? 1810 was founded the company, okay? It is now owned by an American company in the US. I bought it 30 years ago. They developed a shaving range and hair product range for gentlemen. This is the go-to brand in a lot of barbershops. They developed this range from the word of mouth. It's very big in the US. Uh, clubmen have just come to the UK. Because of the growth of the barbering industry at the moment, every company is vying for position to get into the market. There's barbers that are setting up their own product ranges. There's barbers, there's companies that have been established a long time. American crew, we've got Fudge. Does anybody want to name a few? Let's see what knowledge you have. Name me a product range company. Dax. Dax. This is similar to Dax. Very old, it's like a grease, it's a pomade. Anybody else? Ladies? Love it out. Weller? Oh, come on. Schwarzkopf? Why do you put beer down? I hear you all ask. <laughs> okay, it stops smells off your beard. It lubricates, it moisturizes your beard. It looks after your skin. How many of you have to do clients in here and get models? Do you struggle to get models? Yeah, Why there's a college full of people here? Why do you go and get them? Because they just don't turn up. Why don't you go and grab them by the arm and drag <laughs> them in? Like, don't like the idea of having a student here. Because they think you're learning. So what you need to do is be more proactive. You need to think outside the box. What you're going to do next week, you're going to get permission from the college, Eastern. You're going to take two of the guys with you. You're going to set up a shop, pop-up shop in the foyer. You're going to do some hair cutting down there. All it needs to be a quick flash, okay? You're going to take your mobile clippers, so there's lots of clippers on the market nowadays. Take a look, pass these around, have a look, switch them on, or play. Okay, so you, you can just quickly do a quick flash mop. Okay. They're foils. You need to make this into a business, it's not just here for you to learn. Okay. You being the most experienced, and you leave, you will follow his lead, you will get clients on your chair before you go. Okay? Very important to be proactive. Those who's in your hand there, they're new Panasonics. He's like, look at these. I didn't see him smile all day. These scissors are an average price of £400 a pair. If you look on the outside of the scissors, they've got ball bearings. Okay, 
Those Panasonic clippers will go through hair and change their speed depending on the density of the hair. The density of the hair is the thickness of the type of hair you have there. Very important to have tools for the job. Please do not drop my scissors, very, very sharp. If you're going to touch the blade, don't slide your finger down it, just a little tickle. Take a look, pass them around. Make sure you all get a look at all the tools, please, okay? In this industry, you cannot come into this industry half-hearted. This is not a half-hearted industry, it's 100% all of the time because every single haircut that you produce on every single client, you've got to put your heart and soul into it, okay? As barbers, we are sometimes the most important people in somebody else's life. For guys, especially young guys nowadays, the way that the industry's gone and the way that we make them feel when they come in the barber shop, they will stick with you for the rest of their life. If you do a good job, your client will be with you for the rest of their life. And they'll bring their kids and their kids and they'll spread word. They'll try other people, don't get me wrong. But they will stay with you. 25 years I've been cutting hair and 50% of my clients that are on my chair are still the same clients I started when I first started. I love being at my chair, but I also love being here and doing this and inspiring and motivating people into my industry. The story that I started with Liam was he was working in a call centre. He came and he said, I want to be a barber. I said, okay, you've got to commit. To be committed 100% to this industry, he needs to be on the job 100% of the time. <coughs> he let, walked out of his job on Tuesday and started working with me on Wednesday. It took me one month to talk him into coming to work for me. I give him an opportunity to come into the industry that I'm in. I don't want him to work for me. I want him to work for him. I want you to understand that I'm not here to waste my time, okay? I'll put a waistcoat on so that I look smart. I'll put my jeans on so that you can see my legs because I did a leg workout this morning. <laughs> I thought I'd wear my brogues, but I didn't. I put trainers on because I was coming to meet young people. So I want to look a bit cool, but not Damn cool. Kids. You know, <laughs> what you don't say is down with it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote seven children. My son's 23, manages my shop. He's a trained accountant, been to university, he looks after the business side of things. I have a 21 year old daughter, I have a 27 year old daughter with three children. I'm a grandfather, I've got a three year old and a one year old home, and I've got a 12 year old and a 10 year old. Okay? So that's my story. How old am I? Quickly. Four, seven. Five, seven! <laughs> Cut off. Fifty-five! Right, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me you can hear that? That's a good question. This is a question I was waiting for somebody here to ask me. What? Why did I become a barber? Did you want that to? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. Grade zero, I've just put a one on, I'm going to go in with a half. I'm going to travel half the distance I just travelled with my one. Then I'm going to travel half the distance again with my half of half. And then with my half a half a half, I'm going to travel half the distance I just travelled with my half of half. Then with my half a half a half, I'm going to travel with this half the distance I just travelled with my half a half a half. Okay? Half. One. <coughs> Just means he's fading down. Zero. Half. Half a half. Half a half a half. Half a half a half. Half a half a half a half. Each time you move the tape around on your clippers, you'll move it half the distance you just moved it, which is half of a half. Okay? If you want to do it mathematically, half, quarter, an eighth, sixteenth, thirty-two, sixty-fourth. So you can now be learning maths as well as half a half. Half a half you're going to always remember. Not everybody knows what a quarter is, or an eighth, or a sixteenth. But if you look at the numbers, half of sixteen is eight, half of eight is four, half of four is two. Rule number one, if you're cutting somebody's hair and you've got, you have any kind of doubt about what to do, which hair to cut, don't cut it. Right? The client's never going to complain that the hair's been cut too long. They only complain when it's cut too short. The principles of barbering, if in doubt, you get on. Okay? 
Skin fading is the new. This is the bread and butter of our industry. If you can't skin fade, you, 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 you're at a loss because one week you buy, your clients will come in, they'll have the full works. The second week, they might just have the skin fade touched up. So you've got a two price. Not everybody can afford £20 a week to have their hair cut. So they'll come in, you'll charge them 20, week, 20 pounds for the full service, and then the week after you'll charge them half that for just putting the fade in, if you're charging £20 a haircut. And the same would go if you were charging £10 for a full haircut, you would then do £5 for the, for the fade. You can do a, a £2 touch-up if you want to do a £2 touch-up, which would be me shaping around somebody's beard. That's a £10 touch up in my shop, but depending on the economic climate and the shop that you work in will depend on how much you charge for all the various services. If you charge £10 for a haircut and you put a design on, it takes you an hour and it only takes you 20 minutes to do your haircut, how much would you charge? £10 per haircut at 20 minutes, <coughs> it takes you an hour to put a hair tattoo on it, hair tattoo, how much would you charge? £30, exactly, so that's what your time's worth, so what you're selling, you're selling your clients your time, so the longer they sit on the chair, the more time they're buying, so if you average out four haircuts an hour at £10, once you get going, that's £40 an hour, okay, £40 an hour, 10 hours, that's £400, that's in one day, okay. It'll take you approximately three years to get back to that kind of money. And the way the industry is, the way the industry is moving, there's lots of high-end barber shops that are doing premium services where washing and shampooing hair, we're delivering head massages, we're doing shoulders. Okay, all of this adds to the service. If you get your hair cut in my shop, you charge you 25 pounds, whether or not you have your hair washed. Some people come thinking it's going to save them money, but we, we don't. That's part of the service because we've already included it into the price. When you shampoo and wash hair, as we have apprentices coming, at that point they're learning the massage techniques, they're learning product knowledge. We have a full range of ladies' shampoos on the back wash, which we educate the men. You educate your clients. You need to have product knowledge. Every time you get your hair cut, you're going to learn something new as, as you come in. And the person who is delivering your haircut can teach you something even with the product knowledge when you have your own shop 30% of your income is from selling products you need to be able to understand about products and what they do to your hair what kind of products <coughs> do you use Danny? Uh, like wax sometimes wax? Yeah. greasy? matte matte? Yeah. okay so if he came into my shop and I was doing a consultation with Danny and he told me he uses a matte product what product am I going to use on his hair? Hear me. A what, sorry? A Why? To change it and show something different. To change the product and show him something different, which will then hopefully follow into a product sale. Because if he always uses MAP, he's always going to use MAP. And men are very fickle, they sort of stick to what they know. Okay? So. It's down to you as the barber to educate your clients about what they can do with their hair, how they can style their hair. But I ran a third, my first barber shop for eight years before I got my first qualification. Then I worked backwards through the industry. Then I went to college to learn to cut hair. I sat in the class for four weeks, just like you guys. We did our first demo. I got up, I sat my client down. I did a haircut and a hair tattoo. From that point forward, and Mr. Mark Ramsden, I helped him teach the class. I got my first barbering qualification, a level two barbering. I got student in the year, I got this in the year, I, got, I won everything, okay? Just from putting myself forward, ask Lorenzo, we've been to six exhibitions this year. With six. my case, is it six? Six. With my case, just five. turn up at the exhibition. All of the industry leaders are there, all the big brands. Remember, I've worked for several brands, but I'm not, at this point, I'm now selling my own brand, Piranha Barber Academy. So now I'm introducing my brands to their brands. Because I want them to understand I'm an educator. So I'm here to teach about product knowledge. I can use Dear Barber, I can use Fudge, I can use Muck, I can use s -curl. I can use L'Oreal, I can use Weller. So as an educator, I'm now important to them. 
because it's people like us that get their brands out there. Okay, so I'm here delivering education about the products that we would all use. I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want you to have an understanding that there's lots that you can do in the industry. Please put yourself forward. Don't be shy. You've got to be confident as a hairdresser and a barber. You've got to, because you're the person. When you take somebody's hair in your hands, you're so important. You have to be confident. Even if you don't think you know what you're doing, just pretend you do. You can't let them think that you don't know what you're doing. So when you go downstairs and do the haircut, just be confident, you go, you set up, you do a haircut, and then you just go, have some cards, come upstairs, get people up here. It's important, because this is the hub of the whole college. You've got hundreds of clients in here, it should be packed every day. And I know that, as you're a learner, it's one of the most difficult things is to get clients on your chair. Can you see? Oh, really? What I'm doing here? Stroking his head. Pardon? Stroking his head. Yeah, that's it. Do you want to stroke your head? Has anybody touched Afro hair before? No. Yeah? Draw them. Sorry, don't mind me if they have a little. Every day. I'll come and touch it. Who said every day? Me. Oh, okay. Well, sure. Right. Who, who, has anybody not felt <coughs> Afro hair? You've all felt it. <coughs> anybody? Okay. Give me a defining factor of Afro hair. Brittle, curly. Not you, Chibi. Right, okay. <laughs> 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 <Brittle. laughs> I want some of that. No, <laughs> Very good, by the way. Uh, interaction all the way. I love it. Molly. <laughs> Afro hair, on a scale of one to four, what number is this one? What's the scale of one to four? Not a big scale. Okay. Not a big scale. Okay, so it's the curl type. It's, it's tight. It's now, you it's can't say it. Political <coughs> correctness gone mad. Afro Caribbean, and you can't say that, but I'm gonna because that's what this is. But the professional terminology in the standards is this is number four, okay? Because you also get Asian hair. Can I borrow you a second? You've got a curl. Beautiful hair. People are paying good money to get burns. <laughs> what would we say? That is on the scale. Two. Two. Mm. Okay? You've got wavy hair. Lorenzo's probably a three. A three and a half, let's say. <laughs> Lorenzo's like, I want to be a four. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be a four. <laughs> he doesn't want to be a four. Okay, so let's go to. <coughs> Asian hair. Encompasses. Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, which is straight? Chinese, Vietnamese. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Born straight is like that. Super round. Okay. Curly hair, the hair's flat. Okay, if you were to look at a magnifying glass, cut it in half, it'll be flat. Okay, and it curls like that. These hairs like this. Okay. The texture depending on the one to four scale, depends on how tight this curl is. Number four, the classic is a Z, but hair's never seen a Z. Because when you pull it out, it's like a <coughs> coil spring, okay? Why do black people, or mixed race people, have curly hair? What is the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> what is the point? Let's go back tight through, and thick and it protects them Yeah, let's go sun. back through evolution, okay? And think about the desert and how hot it is in the desert. And if you're in the beaming sun all day and you've got this head of hair, because remember, before there were barbers, there were afros. <laughs> okay. So what did the afro do? And why did you grow round? Because it wasn't getting cut. Because it wasn't 
day you got that for one week. <laughs> Why do you think? <coughs> yes, and what will happen with his hair? What's it going to do? So it's coming out this way, it's coming out that way, it's going up and round. Protect it's full of what? So. what's inside, depending on the curl. Think about the curl and how the hair sits. Water. Moisture. Moisture. So there's two things. It traps air, which protects the scalp. <coughs> Water is held in there. So it can moisturise, but it's just to protect it from the heat and the sun, and it gets full of it. I just get air quick, so the tighter the curl, the more protection. As evolution came about, hair changed, and its density changed. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. You finished? Yeah. Okay. So, are you alright? Am I not boring? Are you sure? Yeah. On the feedback form, feel free to put. Well, he went on a bit, but. Yeah. <laughs> That's afro hair. When you cut afro hair, very short, okay? It's the only hair texture that will still move even if it's when a grid, even when it's a grid one. Can you see? It still moves. Can you see how it still moves? Because it's so soft. Remember, it's very fine, thin, and soft hair, so it still moves back because it's flat. Okay? Hence why when you're fading, I'm going to come back. If you're going to comb his hair back and you go forward, okay, you need to comb the hair back into position. Otherwise, it's going to move. This is the mistake, this one tip I'm giving you, Beaston, because I can see you listening, this one tip is going to change the way you fade hair forever. Especially if you get a gentleman on your chair with afro hair. That's the main difference. What barbers do is try and cut afro hair like it's European hair and it doesn't work. Because if you, unless you put it back into position and cut it again, all you're doing is cutting and chasing the fade. And this is what happens, this is where so many barbers get it wrong because they're not in the habit of brushing the hair back. Talcum powder. Why am I putting talcum powder on? So you know where your line is. <coughs> Pardon? So you know where your line is. So I know where my line is, but what this is, this works as a lubricant. Okay, so this will help. Can you hear that? These finales are for finishing your bald face, your skin face. No pressure look. I'm not trying to push on. The foil clippers. I've got to sell this again, I can't have them filming too much. You know? <laughs> I'm joking. The shoot is taking all this in. But I know they're gonna have me back. I already know. I know they're gonna have me back. And the reason why I know this is because you guys are gonna ask for me to come back. And what you're gonna ask for is for me to come back and do some more personal upfront one-on-one -on -one training. And when you ask for it, you're gonna put your hand in your pocket and you're gonna pay for it. And when you've done that, you're gonna really appreciate the education that you're now paying for because you're already getting the free education that's already provided here. What are these clippers doing? Nobody's asked me any questions. I'm really kind of at a loss here. I've got one, but I'll wait until you finish. Go on, though. Can I ask why you use foil clippers? Yes. Can I borrow your hand? You really want <laughs> Okay. So feel here and feel here. It's still quicker there. It's smoother there. There you go. Can I touch that? Show me what you've just done. Anybody else want to have a little feel? There's an old saying, he who feels it knows yeah. it. There. The person yeah. in this yeah. room yeah. that's getting the most yeah. out of this is Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. heard everything, he's seen everything, he's felt it on. and he's felt it all. What I'm doing with these clippers, this is another clipper and it's very similar to the foils, very clean. Have you noticed I use the foils that side and I'm using these on this side? What I'm not doing, I'm not pressing. How does it feel? 
Okay, and the reason why I'm not pressing is because this will irritate the skin. If I press on too hard with these clippers, because these are balding clippers and zeroing clippers and foils, they will tear the layer of skin off the surface of the skin. Okay, each time you shave, let's go to shaving a little bit. Each time you shave, you take a layer of skin off microscopic. So hence why when you do a gentleman shave, you should go with the gain, across the gain and against the grain. But not in the same place on everybody's face because when you take off the layer of skin, the skin will dry, the follicle will swell and what will happen. So hence why you have to be genteel, especially on Afro-Caribbean skin. You can't use razors around this area here. Do you get razor, do you get a little bit of razor rash sometimes down yeah, here yeah, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. And that's caused by the barber being over <coughs> a bit rough. With afro hair, the direction in which you cut the hair is the direction in which it's going to lay. Okay, which direction did I comb his hair? Let's see, he was paying attention when I first sat him on the chair. Except Cherie. <laughs> okay, and what happens when I pull it back? Okay, it lifts. Can you see it lifts off? If you turn his head sideways, can you see how it comes up, straight up? If I comb it forward, see the movement in the hair? See now he's got like a little peak? So he's got a temple taper. We're going to follow the curve of his natural hairline here. We're going to use... Does that feel okay? Yeah. You use your clipper like a pen, okay? So we'll be using the clipper, each corner of your clipper you'll be using it as a ballpoint, okay? It's called a ballpoint pen, it's called a pen method. Some people use like this, okay? So even when I'm shaping, it looks like I'm using the full blade. But what I'm actually doing is I'm rocking, I'm rocking my horse, rocking my horse, okay? That's two. I'm giving you two mm. techniques. Rocking horse, ballpoint. Okay? So if you use one corner continuously, this is a T-liner. The corners are used for detailing. It's called a detailer. Hence why detailing hairlines, necklines. You'll always use the corner of the clipper Do your detailing underneath the surface of the skin are lots of blood vessels if you press in with this machine while you've got your clippers belly down okay belly back while you've got your clippers with the belly down the blade is at its closest point to the skin okay when you roll your clippers backwards and forwards you're moving the blade to the skin so you're rolling, you're rocking your horse, you're doing the ballpoint. Three. So I'll be using my ballpoint, I'll be rocking my horse, I'll be rolling my clippers. <coughs> while I was doing the woodpecker. Okay, so you have woodpecker, you have rocking horse, you have ballpoint, you have rolling. All of these things make a difference. And next time you go to the barber shop, watch your barber, because he will be doing this. The four techniques, the four methods that I've just trained, trained, that I've just told you about, are my trade secrets, but I'm happy to share them because I want you to have them, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Those four techniques do all of this. There's nothing fancy. What I've done is I've broken down what I do to the simplest format possible. I've added terminology that you won't forget, so it's easy to remember, because most barbers do everything by sight, and you're a hands-on. That's why we're in the vocational industry. We all know what one of these is. Have we all seen these? Yeah, Okay, do you want to pass that round? Have a look, it's a cutthroat razor. I think I'm not Okay. You all seen them? Yeah. Take a look. What's this? 
Who said that? Danny! Yes, Danny, it's still here, yeah? <laughs> How are we doing for time? It's um, quarter to one, so... I mean, they're going through the lunch, but... Uh, we've got two classes out there, so I suggest you know, once we've finished, I'm sure you're all really enjoying it, so... We'll take this as long as it needs to go, and then we'll go for an hour's break whenever we go. Are you all happy to stay? Yeah. Anybody yeah. had enough? Feel free to leave at any point. Oh, I don't fine. mind. I won't be offended. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Okay. Most of you come for a razor's take a safety double sided razor. You've got the nose and the heel. Front and the back. Same method will be adopted, the rocking horse, so I will move from the front of the blade to the back of the blade. I will use the middle of the blade if I was shaving, okay? I use this blade for detailing work because I can access the tip of the blade for doing curves. I know you understand. Anywhere between 25 and 30 degrees, you have 90, which is a right angle. Half of that's 45, so anywhere between 25 or 30 degrees, okay? You'll use your blade really slow, and really flat. If you're shaving the full face, you'll use the middle of your blade. Barbering is attention to detail. Now, once you've shaved this around here, just shaping the top, because once we've done this on the half, so it's already tapered in, it just gives it a fresher, cleaner, sharper line. This is what the point is to barbering. Everything needs to be super sharp. Can you see here on this gentleman? It comes in. The sharpness and the creativity of doing all of this will bring out the fade and detail your blending work. Like with Ibrahim's beard, if I was to put my blade just around your face, your beard will completely or just change the way that your hairstyle looks. So what I'm doing here, I'm literally just pulling out a few hairs here where I think it's just a little bit heavy. Liam works next to me at work. So while he's working, I'm able to assist. So what I do my clients full all day long whilst training my staff, and I'm training two, three barbers at the minute at work. So I have two either side of me, and then my son helps me train the other one. My point being, he did the fade, I did the shape up, I will still charge £15 for this in my shop if I've put my hands on anybody's head, even, even though if Liam has done the fade, I will still charge the top money because they've had me do it, it doesn't matter because all I've done is, I've done the technical part but at the same time what will happen We're working as a team, me and Liam now, because he's working with me, so he can do half the job, I can finish it, and we both get paid. You see what I mean? Yeah. You see the importance of teamwork. So what I'm saying to you is, while you're here, and you're learning, you need to feed off each other. This gentleman can do all the blade work for your haircut, Moby. So you can do the haircut, and he can do the blade work whilst you're watching and observing, because this is a learning environment. In my shop, I'm training the competition that all want my spot, exactly. and I'm top dog in my shop. Yeah. And if I'm training them, you better know that they want my spot. And if they don't, then they don't need to be in my shop, because the people who I'm training, I want them to want my job, because they're going to be good. In turn, makes me even better. Mm. Hence, wow, I've got another 20 people in here who have now just become my competition. The point being is, I don't mind teaching and training because this is what I want to empower the people. I want you guys to be inspired by what we do in our industry. It's so important, okay? Back to your hair. Whoever's cut his hair has cut it a little bit short here. Do you agree? Yeah. He agrees. Okay, his hair is very thick through here, 
and he doesn't do anything, but I'm going to change his life right now. I'm going to change his life. I'm going to fix it for him. Change his life. How do you usually style your hair, Tommy? Uh, just as it is. Just as it is. Who cut your hair for you? Uh, is it your barber? Yeah, it's the shop in town. Okay. So they've just gone too high there. You can see he's got. I would say quite a square face. Why has he got a square face? The six shapes, what are they? Come on, let's get to the basics. Round, oval, round, round, square, oblong. Okay, and does anybody disagree with what I've said? If no. you do, feel free. I don't know everything. Remember, I'm here learning as well. So if you don't think I'm right, then tell me. I don't mind. I'm big enough to take it on the chin. At this point, everybody gets out of the chairs and comes round and has a look <coughs> if you can't see. Remember, you're here to learn. If I've got my back to you and I'm studying the way on purpose and you can't see, what would you do? <laughs> okay, what would you do? Stand up and move. Stand up and move and have a look. Okay, so if at any point, feel free to be on your feet. That's better. Now we're engaging. This is called engaging with the educator. Everybody's engaging. It shouldn't have taken me to do that and say all that for you to engage. Please, I want you to get as much of this information. Up close a measure. I'm not going to, I know you was on your phone and that, but we've got all that now. Come on. Come and have a look. Okay, so what I'm doing here. Get the big scissors out. The angle at which I'm using my scissors is like this. So the hair, point cutting, this is a texturizing method, okay? Or thinning. And what I'm doing is I'm Why using... Why would you not just use the scissors? Ah, who said that? Anybody else? Who would just use thinning scissors? Why you would. Uh, why? Tell me why. Just easier. Any any other reasons why? Leave a line. In a busy barber's, you need to use thinning scissors. It does speed things up. It does make things easier. It's not a tool that I shy away from because, as you can see, or as you have seen, I have two pairs of. Thin this is a softening scissor which I use for fading and knocking out weight lines. Okay like so and then I have the who's got my other scissors they returned the evos which are a much wider blade depending on how you use them will depend on how much hair you take off okay if you go straight through the hair you're going to take off big waves of hair what I've done with my straight blades is the same thing that you can do with these in one swipe okay there's more skill involved in doing it with a straight blade, with a straight blade doing it the way i was doing it point cutting texturizing there's more control you can define whereabouts you want to put your texture because you've got pinpoint accuracy doing it like this i don't train my barbers with thinning scissors until they've mastered this so, so that you don't. Like so that I don't. No, I don't. Not do I. Why would I want to make it easier? I want you to have the technical skill. And then let's bring that in afterwards. That will make you a lazy barber. You can't charge thirty pound a haircut and just whack the scissors through it. Yeah. I find it take too much off with the scissors. It takes too yeah. much off straight away. It's very aggressive. So you yeah. just have to learn the lines first. So you do it with machines first, and then go in with the scissors. Yes. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So I'm saying do it like this first, because what this does, if you look, I'm picking different parts of the hair. In my head I'll be counting one, two, three, four, five, you'll see. I'll be ticks off a little bit, but that's all you need. Because what you're doing, you're building structure. It's called the scaffolding method, okay? <coughs> scaffolding the lower down the hair you go. The short hair supports this hair, this hair supports that hair, that hair supports that hair. If you cut the hair at an angle, channel cutting, point cutting, texturizing, 
all of this is texture all of this is texture okay it changes the way it makes hair move it gives it movement and it gives it the ability to style look at his hair now earlier I went like that his hair went didn't it so now he's got lots of texture in here CPD creative progressive development the skills I've just gone through five different very technical cooking <laughs> skills that okay I haven't even touched on the basic one yeah. okay which I've done purposely because we're going backwards I want you to remember what we're learning here today are you all doing the club cutting yeah we all done that uniform layers club cutting his hair's been cut a little bit like that back here you can see it look at that yeah flat no texture no styling the texture when you cut the texture in the hair products complement the barber you are the barber okay I can now style his hair with water okay because I've done such a fabulous haircut we did it together and I say we me and Danny because the consultation was your hair is heavy on the front because like that I'm gonna change your life I said again so I'm giving him information this is all part of the consultation he's not only my client he's a barber so he just learned five texturizing techniques in a matter of minutes and you're doing stuff that you've not even got to just yet so this is gonna help you with your career and you, you when you get to this section with Nick you're gonna remember that's what pound piece is, that's what pound piece is, we about that. It might not make sense now, but it's always going to make sense. So when I'm cutting hair here, I'm cutting on the way out. So when I close my scissors, I slide them back through the hair. This, when you turn your scissors, not flat, sideways, and cut through the hair, is a slicing method, so you slice through the hair. What happens if you were to cut one hair in half, instead of blunt cutting it like that, you create a little point on the end of the hair, in turn creates movement through the hair. So the more texturizing and the more this, plus it looks good. <laughs> the speed element of this, once you've learned how to use one blade, you can then progress to texturizing scissors, thinning scissors, softening scissors, bulk cutting scissors. Once you've mastered the single blade method, because now you have a skill, what you have here is another tool that makes your job a little bit easier and a little bit faster. This is how you sculpt a hair, okay? You can make straight hair wavy with this, okay? The way that you use your hair dryer, you can manipulate, let me try, let me try. what you're going to be doing, you're manipulating the hair, you're making it move, I can make your hair spiky. What are you laughing at? Come and sit here. <laughs> I'm not going to cut it, we're just going to make it spiky. <laughs> okay, you hold that for me. Let's have a look. Bone straight, look at that. Not a spike inside. Okay, so you take some water. Okay, you take your hair dryer. Oops. I like the fact that Danny just leaned forward to see. Did you see that? Completely engaged, paying attention even though I'm studying it. Pass them round, pass them round, have a smell. I'm not going to catch that. Yeah. Pass them round. Yeah. Yeah. Beardos, gentlemen, beardos. Yeah. Don't you dare say no. I don't want to have a look at it, I don't want to use it. I want to use it. Hold on. Open them up, don't worry. Okay, so this is not going to be, this may not be his cup of tea, this hairstyle. But this is the style he's getting today. <laughs> because we're trying something new with him, okay? So we're going to use the product just to restyle his hair. He's now got his spiky. If I had my way, I'd cut texture through that. It's still going to go back to what it had when he sat down once he's washed it. I've put two lines in the side. I've done a double drop fade either side. I've made his two little lines look really fancy. Just by the simple means of just putting a fade either side. 
Again, what I'm going to demonstrate here is how putting a side part in will completely transform and change his haircut. And can anybody tell me what putting a centre part in the middle of this lady's head is going to do now? Pardon? <laughs> That's a definite hairdresser, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to change the shape of the face and the way that the head looks, okay? So putting the centre part in the middle stretches the face. It makes you look longer, so you wouldn't... Uh, somebody who's got a oval shaped face wouldn't wear a centre part because it's going to make your hair look longer, your face look longer, okay? Hence why... So two reasons, she's got a corn flick. If she goes like this, and then goes like this, and you let the hair fall, it'll fall into the natural part. What you must never do with hair, hair is gonna do its own thing. You've got little <coughs> muscles in the scalp that determine which way the hair is gonna sit. When you use a hair dryer, you manipulate the muscles, so the muscles push you forward, you're pushing back. You use the heat to stand up, it cools down, the hair stays where you put it. The angle of the part is the same with the gent's hair, okay? If you angle your part at the wrong angle, you could change the shape of somebody's face, okay? If you do a part that's going to slope down and your client's got a wide head, you're going to increase the width of his face. If you have a big gentleman who's got excess weight, the way you shape his beard is very, very important because you can give him a chiseled jawline or you can give him a double chin. <laughs> okay it's our job to make clients feel fantastic and what you do to them is so important and when you're doing it it's important that you tell them even if you're not even if because what i've told i've spoken about everything i've done today but i also do this to my clients that are on the chair because at the same time as you're delivering a haircut you're delivering education you're teaching your client what you're doing and also it makes them stay because when they do stray and the other barber doesn't do what you've done. What doesn't do what you've done because you've explained to him what you're doing. He's going to be watching, thinking, "Hmm, you don't do it like my barber." And then he's going to sit there, regret it, and come back. So the angle of which you, where you put your part, is very important. So again, with when I was using this lady here, to push his hair naturally just sits. I'm going to pull a little bit out. After you've shaved, you need to protect the skin, you need to kill the bacteria that's on the skin, you need to close the pores. When I start a shave, what I do is, I get my client, I massage his face within an inch of his life, very gently. Then I get my hot towel steamer and place a cold fit cloth on his face that I've just taken out of the freezer put the cold cloth onto his hot face then I'll form him up put on the foam and then the oil on top of the foam then I'll get some head shave gel I'll put that on top of the foam then I'll put some aftershave on then I'll use a dirty blade you do it really, really well. And yeah, yeah. give him a shave. There's nobody going to stop me. Okay, I've done things all in the wrong order, all backwards, upside down, back to front, just to see who's paying attention, or to see who would stop me. That's the roll on his head. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Contours on the head. Contours and dimples. How you do this is just by applying a little bit more pressure. Again, the way that you use your clippers, you can use them flat, you can use them on the toes, you can use it short one, long one, one, one and a half. The way that you move your machine will change the length of the hair that you are cutting, okay? I've shaped around his ear. Three months. Yeah, three months, yeah. So, Liam would have done this himself in the shop. Because what I'll do is I'll say to him, like, half a heel, look at it, it'll pull a certain face and I know that it's not and then he'll beat himself up about it and then he'll just do it or sometimes I will step in and give him a hand if he asks me to but I prefer not to if he's been with me six months and he's still doing it I just won't do anything because I need him to be able to take out any lines can you see his hair? 
Okay. So it looks a different yeah. colour and everything, doesn't it? You it know. looks a different colour. This is like a hair uh, putty paste. It's sort of matte look <coughs> with a shine. So it's halfway between a matte and a gloss. Really suits your face like that. Off your face, mate. This is the way forward. Do you, do you do feel better like that? Like that? No. Okay. Is it always on his face? Yeah. Perfect. So we need to have it off your face. It really suits you like that. Really suits you. This is called beard fillers. Ladies, we've been doing it with our eyebrows for years. Okay? So you all know what I'm about to do, don't you? Oh, Finn is bearded. Jake, are you listening? This is so important. This is just adding another fiber to your price list. And you're not even having to cut hair. What you're going to do is put some wax on his face. Okay? So, you will pick the part of the beard and you'll use a little brush and you'll just paint it onto the skin. Okay? Ladies, you do this with your eyebrows for years. Guys are now painting on their beards. This is not a joke. I'm not having a laugh because this face looks like it's black. Too dark, Wait a minute, I haven't finished. I'm finished. going to blend it. Chill out. going to blend it in. Okay. Okay, turn your face to this way. Okay. <laughs> so, all you'll be doing is just... And you'll gently just... This will stain the skin slightly. Okay. In the, now the tell the no, 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 listen. <laughs> listen to me. Temporarily, until he washes his face. You apply it with a little bit of beard oil, yeah. okay, a little bit of tash wax which is used to, to twizzle bits. If you have any guys who've got odd grey hair in the beard that they're very conscious about, they'll use the wax. You'll use this, you'll fade it through the beard, and you'll use this on any patches that your client has in their beard. It's called a beard filler and it's supposed to look dark. If you look on Instagram and you see all the American barbers, they're all oh, everything is super sharp, is it not? Mm -hmm. This is how they do it. Just like this. Then you take your razor and you shave around the top of this. And then it makes your line sharp. You just fade. The more you, you fade this through, this will just wipe off, honestly. You see, does it look too dark now? No, it's blended. It just look like how it is, but it, it does look really good. It looks, it looks really sharp and it looks brings your face in. You well. don't need it, bro, because you want to put a shh razor on there, but this is not for you, this is for your mate who's got patch of beard. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so I've simultaneously did three haircuts. I do this all the time at work. That's how I'll earn £60 an hour. <coughs> I've just done three. If I do two haircuts an hour, it takes me half an hour to do a full haircut. If I don't talk, I can do it in 20 minutes. If I don't talk at all, I can do it in 15. I love my job, and part of the job is interacting with the clients. It's so important. But thank you. Cheers. <laughs> it's interacting with my clients and because I'm always teaching and learning and I've got Lenny works in my office so I'm up and down the stairs working with Lenny I'm actually like uh, it just drives me insane I drive the staff insane my mood changes constantly because I'm always thinking about something else I'm already studying and thinking about what I'm going to do with Jewsbury at the Kirklees branch because that's what I've been offered, so I'm going to be straight on to that straight away. <laughs> <laughs>